Welcome back or welcome to my channel. I don't know how you got here, but I am so glad you're here. I hope you stick around and smash that subscribe button before the end of this video. And also click the little bell beside subscribe to all. That way you'll be notified whenever YouTube sends out notifications. Please like and share this video. Also comment your thoughts and opinions. I love hearing and reading what all of you have to say about all of these topics, so don't forget to drop a comment below. I'm sorry, I'm still going to say it, because I don't understand why nobody else is saying it. If the roles were reversed, Aaron Carter would be the first suspect on the list okay this whole situation the fact that he spoke and literally was on live with her harassing him non-stop his ex he was pleading for her to leave him alone he stated how toxic their relationship was he told everybody everybody the horrible thing she done, he said that she has never been there for him. She's never helped him in any way, shape, or form. And he said, y'all, it is so obvious to me. And I'm like, why isn't she being investigated? Why? Now, this right here, this right here, Aaron Carter's fiance calls cops as she moves things out of the late singer's home. We've got so much more to talk about this story, okay? I mean, it... It's just a little suspicious to me. Aaron Carter's fiance, but they were ex. We heard and seen the last live. They were not together. He was begging her to leave him alone, but she was repeatedly messaging him while on live, threatening him and his life. She wasn't concerned. She was not concerned. She was straight bullying him and triggering him. He literally started crying and she just kept on and on and on and on and on and on and on. He would block her. She would make up multiple fake accounts and message him. Y'all, it was so toxic and so alarming. I'm like, this was public. This was on live. This video still exists. Why isn't she being investigated? Why? Because she's a woman? Because she's a pretty OnlyFans model? I'm literally asking out of just pure, I don't know. Like, I don't know why she's not being investigated. Why? TMZ reported that a woman called the L.A. County Sheriff's Office Tuesday afternoon so they could make sure the process went by smoothly. This was just yesterday. Moving trucks were also spotted outside the Los Angeles home as the mom of one who wore a tie-dye hoodie and a friend loaded her boxes. I want to remind everybody, uh, she didn't even have custody of her child. The grandmother does. Okay, she lost custody. He did too, but she lost custody. Okay? You mothers out there know what the... There has to be some sort of reasoning why she didn't have custody of her child. I mean, it, this right here, I'm like, I, I just can't. I can't explain why she's not being investigated or questioned. Her painful move comes just a few days after Aaron died at age 34 and his body was discovered in the bathtub. According to reports, responding officers found multiple cans of compressed air in the singer's bathroom as well as in the bedroom. It was also reported that the pers that prescription pill bottles were at the scene. Okay, well, I mean, he already stated he was on prescription medicine. He also stated he smoked medical marijuana he smoked marijuana and it was legal <sighs> now i don't know about the multiple cans of compressed air okay i don't know nothing about the compressed air now i do know he 
said in the past he had addiction issues and it huffing or something like that. So, I don't know. But I do know that his family and friends were saying he was at a good place. Okay, he was working on multiple projects. It's, I, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't, it's just, it's too suspect to me. Melanie and Carter's best friend, Gary, had previously walked through the home, which the late musician was planning on selling. He literally was on video saying she wasn't allowed in his home. He didn't want her there. He did not want her there. He didn't like her. Why is she playing the role of this concerned fiancé when his live video stated a lot? A lot. Please do your own research. This makes absolutely no sense to me. No sense. I'm like, so you're just ignoring that he was literally saying... She was harassing and stalking him. She, he's like, Melanie, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Just days before he was found, then immediately after he's found, oh, she's the loving fiancé who cared so much? Not buying it. Sorry, not buying it. When I'm telling you, if the roles were reversed, if she was in his position, he would be the first suspect. Would he not? After they removed the body from the house, they allowed just a few people to get into the house. This also didn't make no sense to me. Okay, if there is an active investigation, why are you letting random people, the public, in the house? Do y'all see this? Carter's friend said, we just wanted to go in there and see if any blood or any alcohol or anything was in the house. His friend told Entertainment Tonight on Monday. What? Wh Why? Why is the cops allowing people to go in the house and look around when there's an investigation? They literally said there's an investigation surrounding his death. Cause of death has been undetermined. There was caution tape around the house. Why are you letting random people in a crime scene? Makes no sense. While touring the home, his friend and on again, off again fiance saw the arsenal cans and yellowish bathtub water where Aaron's body was found. This is horrible. She spoke out about the devastating loss, saying her heart is completely broken. You literally just told him he was going to die before he died. You literally was telling him how horrible of a horrible of a person he was. We heard you. We seen... It's unreal to me. I just can't. Get this. She said, my heart is completely broken over the passing of my fiance. I knew he was struggling and I tried everything to help him. Really? Really? Did those videos that we seen, those lives, was that you helping him? Telling him how shitty of a person he was? He literally just come out and said you cheated on him multiple times in his home. Okay? He was not into you because of that. He said, you opened up GoFundMes trying to scam his fans. He literally said that in his live before he passed. Yes. Yeah. She said he was very independent and strong, pers had a very independent and strong personality, and I couldn't help him in the way I felt he needed it. You literally told him he was going to die. And you wasn't talking about concern over anything. You was being a straight B. You was being a straight bully. You was. We all seen and we all heard it. We all seen him in pain, begging you to leave him alone right before he passed? Huh? You know what? I know fentanyl is a killer, and I know fentanyl is um 
you know, the thing that kills a lot of these people with addiction issues, okay? I wonder, I wonder what is in his system. If fentanyl was in his system, where'd he get it? That's just, I, I'm just throwing it out there, okay? It's so crazy to me that she was pure evil to him. She treated him horrible. Horrible. He was no saint. I did not say that. But he literally, I heard him beg her to leave him alone, and she didn't. She kept on and on and on and on and on and on and on. That wasn't helping him. It's just, what? Now she's loving fiancé? Uh-uh. 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 I only wish I had more people to help me with him. I will now be raising our son as a single mother. The grandmother has him. The grandmother has the son. You don't have custody of your son. Do you see the lies she's putting out there? It is beyond. I will now be raising our son as a single mother. But I have a I have to be strong for our son. I'm devastated. Y'all y'all uh-uh. Look at that. See, they're going to blame it on addiction and mental health issues. I already know it. I already called it. But the messed up part is you sit there and you allow people to trigger people with issues. It pushes them over the edge. It's heartbreaking. It is. That these people are not held accountable. She should be held accountable for the trolling, the stalking, the harassment. She was harassing him. And get this. Aaron's best friend literally just said this. And I quote, mentally ill people think differently. He was pushing, poking to get that attention. Aaron did things he should have never done to his brother, Nick. But we're talking about mental health. He was crying out for help. He looked up to Nick in so many ways. They were trying to make everything good again. Aaron was working on a new music project, being willing to regain custody of his 11th month old son. It just breaks my heart that nobody was there for him. I mean, the ex-girlfriend, the ex-fiance, the baby mama was literally poking the bear. His best friend just went in the house with her? I'm sorry. Why didn't he say, hey, you have done nothing to help his mental health? He literally said Men mentally ill people think differently. Why did he? What? This makes no sense. If you're sitting here stating that, why don't you look at his ex-fiance who you're parading around? Huh? Makes me wonder, are they closer than we think? Huh? We'll have to play close attention or pay close attention and follow that relationship. I wonder if they develop a relationship. Aaron's uh, best friend and the ex-fiance because they sure are hunky-dory right now, huh? Really? His ex-best friend is sitting here. It's Look, this is the same guy who was allowed to go in the house with the ex-fiance. He's sitting here blaming but saying he ain't blaming. But pointing fingers at the brother, Nick Carter, saying, well, he knew he was mentally ill. He could have done something. Uh, the ex-fiance that was actively sitting there poking him until he passed. You need to be asking her the same. Why? 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 It baffles me. They can't nobody call this BS out. You want to have these channels out here that claim to be holding people accountable. This is the shit you need to hold accountable. Okay, stop with the petty nonsense. Quit wasting your time on that. Speak on things that matter like this right here. Okay, this matters. Oh, and get this. According to Gary, the friend, they were not in a relationship. 
Melanie and Aaron were not in a relationship and had stopped talking when Aaron died. But Melanie had stayed in contact with the housekeeper, who found Aaron dead, to get updates on how he was coping. Really? Really? Because in the live video, her saying how shitty of a human he was, how he was going to die, how he was horrible, that doesn't sound like a concerned individual. It sounds like a pos to me. You know what that is? A piece of shit. You sit there and you know somebody's struggling mentally. Okay? You clearly are struggling mentally too. How dare you? How dare you shame somebody and just poke them? Kick them while they're dead? That's exactly what she done. We watch the live. Okay? I will attach it. I will link it in the description of this video. Because people need to see and hear it. Absolutely, because it's the media is pulling this. Oh, she's so devastated. Don't believe it. She wasn't devastated before. She literally was sitting here just harassing him, stalking him. It's what? And nobody's acknowledging that? If she was a man, the media would acknowledge it. I promise you that. I can't believe this. Okay, Gary, 45, explained, I was at another friend's house on Saturday and got a call saying Aaron had passed. Okay, we're going to get to, like, how he was found. The de You know, we, we got to do a deeper dive into this. Okay, got to. I was totally shocked. I couldn't stop crying. It was so devastating and painful. I decided to drive to Lancaster and contacted Melanie. She said, I need you by my side. I drove there. We hugged and cried. Melanie wanted me and her to say goodbye to him, to his body, but the sheriff said it wasn't a good idea because of its condition. We heard he had been dead in the tub for at least a couple of hours. We didn't get into the house until after the body was taken out. I have been into the house before. It was terrible walking inside again. Melanie was in a lot of pain. But she wasn't before when she was telling him he was going to die and he was a horrible person. I'm going to keep saying it because it needs to be said and known. That's the facts. There's proof. Okay, but now, well, okay. Now he's quoted saying the water in the bath was green. But he literally just said it was yellow in the other one. It was horrible thinking he had died there alone. Uh, where were the dogs? Did the dogs not bark or do anything? Because we heard the dogs bark throughout the lives, and they were short lives. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gary said, he was never suicidal. I just wish he did not die alone. I don't think him being alone was good for him. I wish Melanie was there or anyone. If he wasn't alone, it wouldn't have happened. He was literally on live before he was found, okay? Like a day or two before he was found. He was on a live. She was harassing him and stalking him nonstop through fake accounts. He would block her. and He literally said she has so many different accounts. She makes them up to stalk him and harass him. And she's mean to him and cruel to him and... Makes him feel horrible about himself. He literally was crying out for help. He was crying out for help. Okay? But his friend is sitting here saying he wishes that person who was harassing him was there for him. What? None of this makes sense to me. I'm like, y'all are literally creating a circus. And to me, it's obvious that y'all all had something to do with it. I'm just saying to me, in my opinion, in my opinion, if I was an investigator, if I was any sort of law enforcement, if I was any sort of attorney general, if I was anybody with any sort of pull, you can bet these two would be investigated. Gary, her, and the housekeeper. I'm going to need to talk to all y'all. I'm just saying. 
Holly Davidson, ICT, and Kelly K. PR publicity team, who represented Aaron while he was alive, told the U.S. Sun, and I quote, Melanie and Aaron were broken up. We can't comment on any of the details regarding her and the day of. Regarding Gary's chilling claims, the doctor, who was recently introduced to Aaron for the management of his medical issues, said there are too many variables to speculate why the bathwater was green when his body was removed. Okay. So, Aaron was found unresponsive in the bathtub by a staff member after he died of what friends suspect was a drug overdose. Neighbors said they heard Aaron's employee scream. Is this the homeless lady, alleged homeless lady that he had just hired to clean his house? Huh. We're going to do more research into that as well. Neighbors said they heard Aaron's employees screaming, he's dead, he's dead, when she discovered the tragic singer at his home in Lancaster on Saturday morning. Now, apparently, the inconsolable on and off again partner came just minutes after. There is the housekeeper. His shocked on-again, off-again partner, Melanie, was later spotted at the scene, appearing distraught as she sat outside the house. Well, I'd be distraught, too, if I just told somebody they was going to die on live video, and then they were found dead. Just saying. And get this. Homicide detectives were dispatched. A standard procedure for deaths under such circumstances. A friend told the U.S. Sun that they did not that they believe Aaron did not kill himself and that he had plans to go into the studio to record new music next week. He also was working on a sitcom and other projects. His friends and family said he was in a good headspace. He was in a good spot in his life. He was working on trying to get his son back. My question is, if the homicide detectives were dispatched, if they were doing an investigation, why were these random people allowed to be in the house and on the in the crime scene? Okay, let me just throw that little nugget out there for you. If something happens to you or your loved one, um, and it's this was the situation, would you feel comfortable knowing that you know just random people were allowed to go into the crime scene? Because it, it, from my standpoint, from my viewpoint. Uh, the ex-fiance who was trolling and harassing him and who he begged to leave him alone, I don't think she should have been allowed in the house. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Melanie's mom was granted custody of the baby under a court order. Aaron claimed in an interview. In September, Aaron enrolled in a month-long outpatient program at the L.A.-based Lion Rock Rehab Center. Sources said Carter had been smoking marijuana late at night and at times seemed out of it and high when talking to friends. Y'all, marijuana is legal where he was at. Legal. I mean, haven't heard many people or anybody overdosing on smoking marijuana. Have you? Have you? I'm being honest. And I do want to point out, he literally just done an interview with No Jumper. And, in my opinion, they was just mocking him the entire time. Okay, he admitted, and he was smoking marijuana. It's legal where they was at. So, he's smoking marijuana. It's legal. He was smoking it. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand. This right here has me like, what? What? What's going on here? We're going to blame it on everything else and you're not going to investigate these people? What? Neighbor Anthony, a local photojournalist, told the U.S. Sun, I have a police scanner for work and heard the call come in that there was an unresponsive male in the bathtub. My wife is a nurse, and we headed over and banged on the door. She had her automated external defibrillator, defibrillator with her. 
A woman answered the door and was screaming, he's dead, he's dead, but wouldn't let us in because she'd already called the cops. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If somebody is dead in my house and a nurse comes to the door with a defibrillator, I'm going to let her ass in. Okay? What? I, this don't make sense to me. A second witness said the house sitter was seen... Okay, wait a minute. The house sitter. Was she the house cleaner or house sitter? Was she there? This don't make no sense to me. She was seen looking shaken and spent time speaking with police inside before escorted her out with her belongings in a bag. They added the house sitter was the only person behind the police tape for a long while. Melanie had to wait hours before police would even tell her anything and she was desperate to see their many pet dogs still in the house. Okay. A close friend told the U.S. Sun that they believe Aaron did not commit suicide. He had been planning studio sessions with artists next week in Los Angeles to lay down new tunes for an album. The singer had also assured the friend that he was excited to showcase new music and work with artists who were flying out to L.A. specifically for a duet. Aaron spoke to one of his handlers around 6 p.m. on Friday night going over his recording plans for the next week. The friend said Aaron did not commit suicide. He was planning to work on music next week with some artists out of town. Okay, all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. So now we got 6 p.m. on Friday night. He spoke to one of his handlers, whatever that means. So either way, he spoke to somebody around 6 p.m. Friday night. He was excited going over plans. Okay, what happened between Friday night? 6 p.m. What happened between 6 p.m. and Saturday morning when he was found? Huh? I hope they go through his phone. I hope there's some some sort of explanation. I hope if she sit sit there and repeatedly harassed him and bullied him and trolled him, I hope that's looked into. And I hope she's held accountable. And I quote, this is from his friends. I was talking to him now the night before. He was locking down the studio, planning travel logistics, and seemed very excited. Any suggestion that he was suicidal last night when he was in contact with his friends and team is wrong. Hearing the news this morning was absolutely devastating. Aaron had a good heart and was really talented. He was keen to show the world he was a great father and continue strongly with his music career. The source added, Aaron was always adamant, and he took medication and pills that were prescribed by doctors. This is more from the neighbor. Cheval said she, the woman, was hysterical and was foaming at both sides of her mouth. He asked her if she needed any help. But the house sitter was screaming, he's gone, he's dead, he's gone. She kept, she kept screaming over and over. Cheval said he asked her again to let them in. Let us help you. Let us try. My wife is a registered nurse. Let her help. But the house sitter, who he described as a as hysterical, refused to allow them to enter, screaming out to them, I can't let you in. She locked the front door, and I could hear her running away from the door. A few minutes later, L.A. County Sheriff's deputies arrive at the scene. Amanda Chabal, who was waiting out by the sidewalk in front of the Carter's house, explained to the cops about the woman who answered the door. They started banging on the door, yelling they were from the Sheriff's Department. Finally, the same woman answered the door, but didn't open it all the way. She had her body pushed against the door, still not allowing anyone inside, but the sheriff's deputy pushed past her and ran inside the house. Minutes later, they exited the house, but not with the same urgent demeanor they had going in. At that point, I thought whoever inside there was dead. Then minutes later, the local ambulance company arrived at the scene and quickly took out their stretcher and wheeled it to the front door. 
But a few minutes later, they left the house with an empty stretcher. Police escort Aaron Carter's house sitter from his house on Saturday after she had discovered him in the bathtub. When she left the house, the woman was wearing different clothes to the ones she had been wearing when she discovered his body. Cheval said it wasn't until Carter's on-again, off-again girlfriend and baby mama, Melanie, arrived at the house sobbing when he realized it was Aaron inside. Police referred to the woman as a house sitter. Her identity has not been revealed. Cheval moved into his house across the street from Carter in August. He only had one conversation with him when Carter welcomed him to the neighborhood, but he said he's heard and witnessed a year's worth of chaos in those three months. It was a great neighborhood we lived in, but he was a terrible neighbor. Cheval said he personally didn't have any issues with him, but says he was probably the only one who didn't. In the three months that Cheval had been Carter's neighbor, he witnessed him in several verbal altercations with various neighbors and constant fighting with Melanie. Not too long ago, the police came out for a burglary call, and it turned out he was fighting with Melanie. The local police are all too familiar with Carter's address. From what I've seen, he has his own worst en- he is his own worst enemy and brought a lot of these problems on himself. Cheval said the police have been out to Carter's home at least three times since August. He said the entire neighborhood is sad that Carter died, but on, but on the other hand, some neighbors have said they are glad he is no longer around. That is horrible. How could you say that about anybody? Maybe they were the problem. I mean, if you could sit there and say you're glad somebody's dead, you're, you have far, far worse demons than the person you are shaming. Please don't ever say that about nobody. Don't you ever wish and be glad anybody is dead. Don't do that. How horrible. My God, that's horrible. Cheval said he'd only had one conversation with his famous neighbor. He said it was brief and Carter welcomed him to the area. But Cheval said most of the neighbors did not have pleasant interactions with him. Now the neighbor, Cheval, is still puzzled about the house sitter's action. You need help, and someone who has medical training is offering to help you, and you are turned away. It just doesn't make sense. See, that's what I said. Does it make sense to y'all? I've never seen this woman before in my life. Erin had a few regular people who came by, but I have no idea who she is. Cheval said the thing that saddened him most about Carter's death was thinking about his son. His son is going to grow up without a father, and that's heartbreaking. Cheval said that when the house sitter answered the door and when he saw her out in the front yard with sheriff's deputy, she was wearing white pants and a black long sleeve top. When she finally left Carter's house with police, sheriff's deputies were carrying a roller luggage bag. She had changed into red tights and wore a red printed dress with a dark vest. After she left, the sheriff's deputy carried out a brown paper evidence bag. He's not sure if her original clothes were in the brown bag or if it was something else. It would be strange for someone randomly to change their clothing before going with the police. Carter had been trying to sell his home that he had just bought two years ago. Okay. On Monday, two days after his death, it was again taken off the market. I just found a video that was just posted at the end of October. This was literally just posted like a couple of weeks ago. And it was Aaron introducing this lady to everybody. Let's listen. Uh oh. What's going on? Come in. Daddy? My new assistant. She's from Africa, bro. No shit. I, I took her into my home, and um, you know she was homeless. And uh, I took her into my home, and she used to be like a top model and all that stuff. So I took her into my home and gave her a job. Is it? And she's gonna be the au pair nanny for my son. 
you you always find something good to do with everybody. Okay, in that same video, he also stated that she was going to be his assistant. She was going to travel the world with him. She is uh, his house planner. She is the executive over his home. Y'all, you cannot just put your trust into people. Okay? Did nobody know this woman from Adam? You get what I'm saying? She literally was a homeless person off the street. You literally don't know her or her truth. I mean, I hope and pray the law enforcement, the investigators, the homicide, whatever. I hope they investigate not only the house sitter, the homeless lady. I hope they investigate the ex-girlfriend. Somebody knows something. And in my opinion, somebody done something. Whether they sold him some fentanyl. Whether they slipped something in his stuff. I mean, y'all, I'm telling you right now. This stuff is real. This is real life. It's sad, it's heartbreaking, and it's tragic. And I hope and pray to God the truth comes out and justice is served. This guy went out here like literally harming people. He was living his life. Living his life. How sad is that? People didn't like it, so they decided to just put him on front street, troll him, bash him, bully him, harass him, parade him around there on front street just like he's a toy to be made fun like it's it's a lot you get what i'm saying these are real people real lives real stories real issues okay the impact your words and your actions can have on people is real if you don't like somebody don't watch them point blank period period i've seen a lot of people say yeah well he was troubled <laughs> okay well i think you're troubled for making that statement I mean, who the hell are you to sit there? Who are you? Who are you? The mental health police to tell people, oh, well, he's, he's troubled. He's troubled. What? The judging is what's troubling. Okay. The fact that people got the balls to sit back and be like, you're troubled. I don't need any therapy. I don't need any evaluating. I don't have to worry about my mental health. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. You people out there who are shaming people and who continue to push the he was troubled, mental health got the best of him. I just, there's no words. I'm just going to leave it at that because no matter what I say, people will still be ignorant. People will still be closed-minded, choose to shame and judge people. It's just, it's the sad part of life. This situation, the passing of Aaron Carter, is sad. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Y'all, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Please thumbs up and share this video. This topic of discussion is hard to have, but it's necessary. That's just the way I feel. Smash that subscribe button. Please click that little bell beside subscribe to all. That way you'll be notified whenever YouTube sends out notifications. I love you for watching. And I will see y'all in my next video.